After first seeing it develop from thousands of miles away when Laura emerged into the Gulf of Mexico, it was clear it would be an impressive storm. From space, we could see it would be a rather potent storm as well. The path had been forecast to hit to the east of the metro area, and it did, which meant that for millions in our area, there were sighs of relief, but oh, the heartbreak for our friends to the east as Laura made landfall as a strong Category 4 storm, heavily damaging Cameron on the coast and other towns in its path. Joining, this, joining me this morning to talk about the Laura phenomenon and what we may be in for in the weeks ahead, KPRC Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley, Meteorologist Jeff Linder, the Director of the Hydrologic Operations Division of the Harris County Flood Control District. Good morning to both of you. We know this is a ripe time for hurricanes and that every storm is different. But Frank, first you, what stands out for you about Laura? You know, a lot of things. Uh, first of all, uh, we've been talking about the Gulf of Mexico being the warmest basin in the world. 88 to 90 degrees. And so it's no real surprise that Laura ramped up so quickly. And, and it didn't surprise me. I, 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 I saw Michael, uh, Hurricane Michael ramp up like that. Hannah uh, went to a 93 mile an hour storm. So the Gulf of Mexico is, is the perfect, as long as you don't have wind shear or dry air, it is the perfect stew pot for these storms. So Laura impressed me. I mean, it went from 80 miles an hour to 150 in 24 hours. That's a fast storm move, a movement for speed. Yeah, but Jeff, they're all doing that. They're all doing that in the Gulf of Mexico. So I think we need to learn from that. If you get anything in the Gulf, you cannot underestimate its strength because all of them can go to count one, two, three, four, and even five. And a lot of us thought that, that Laura might end up as a five and it almost did which is only 156 miles an hour and it went to 150. So that that impressed me. Um, and then, you know, what else, else impressed me, Campbell, was the American model. And I'm so tired of hearing people people say, oh, well, the euro, the euro, the euro. As the euro as if, first of all, the European uses American data to even make its forecast. Uh, but the American model stood right there at Cameron pretty much the entire forecast period. And Jeff can attest to that as well. But it, it may have gone a little bit over the uh, Texas border and then back, but it was the American model really impressed me. Jeff, as the as the, it did very well with Hannah too, and Cristobal. So the American model this season is far outpacing the European model. And I think people need to realize that. Jeff, as you've been watching this storm, does that stand out for you as well? What else well, did you see about Laura that really kind of made you take notice? Yeah, I think one of the biggest takeaways from, from Laura in particular is the uh, near excellent forecast from the National Hurricane Center. You know, we're talking three and a half days out. It was aimed up at Sabine Pass and it, it never wavered. And, and I know a lot of people um, on Tuesday were, you know, why isn't the Hurricane Center shifting this west? Because all these models are over here towards Galveston Bay. And they held their, their position right there at Sabine Pass. And in the end, uh, you know, just almost nailed it exactly from three and a half days out. And I think, you know, that, that's a, a testament of, of the human um, forecasting ability sometimes. Um, and as Frank said, you know, we have so much so many people put so much stock in the European model, um, and it was off quite a bit on this storm, um, and also on the genesis of these storms. Both Marco and Laura um, was that, and, and, and then of course uh, we had Marco before this. We, we've kind of forgotten about Marco since it was pretty much a non-event, but we had Marco, and, and everybody was kind of getting prepared and ramped up for Marco, and it was just kind of this 10-day marathon we just went through of a tropical threat here in the Gulf of Mexico, and, and for many people it's exhausting. Um, but, you know, one thing to keep in mind is, is even though we didn't have an impact here locally in the Houston area, uh, we had a, a very, very near miss. And when you talk about tropical meteorology, it's about as close as you can come uh, without having a direct hit. And only about 90 miles is what it was um, from being a complete disaster here to what we got. What kind of message do you tell people here? Because we got a close call, a lot of people just breathe a sigh of relief and go on with life as normal uh, in terms of them being prepared. This probably is a good way to get people prepared, don't you think, in terms of as a near miss, you got ready, maybe now you keep everything in a state of readiness going forward. 
Well, you know, I, and Jeff can attest to this, but it's like a buzz saw, and this thing was a buzz saw. And if your finger's not in it, then your finger's fine. If your finger's in it, your finger's gone. <laughs> and and that's the thing that people need to remember. That next, I mean, you you always have to watch your finger. And so the next one that comes along, that might be our buzz saw. So you cannot, you absolutely can't lay your guard down. And the fact that this is three storms that have hit the United States, three hurricanes that have hit the United States before the end of August is record setting for the time. So we're already to what? We're already to the end storm, Nana and uh, Omar, if those systems develop. So we're well into the alphabet, alphabet and we're not even, for us, Jeff, we have what? About five weeks left, really. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's the lesson is that you know, we've had, we've had a number of storms, so many already. We just got lucky. Look, 2005, there were 28 storms. That was Katrina, Rita, uh, Dennis, Emily, Wilma, all five Cat 5 storms, and we didn't get a single one. We had the Rita traffic, as you'll remember, but not one system hit the Texas coast officially in 2005. Yeah. Out of 28 storms. And we're making and up we for it this year. 28 storms this year, and not we'll get yeah. one. But yeah. if you get one, like Jeff said, then it's your storm. It's an absolute disaster. Well, I, I can see. The one thing about this is that we love to talk. We, I can see we're going to need to do a Newsmakers Extra, so we're going to ask you to go to click to and go to Newsmakers Extra. We're going to continue this conversation. But before we do that, Jeff, how concerned are you about the progress of flood mitigation efforts now in our region? They seem to take a long time. People now say, with this near miss, this could have hit us. And if it did hit us, we would have had some real serious problems. How confident are you that progress is being made toward making things a lot easier for us? Yeah, well, there's certainly progress being made, and every day there's progress uh, happening. You know, and you're and you're right; it does take a long time to implement a lot of these big projects that are going on. And in some cases, it can be years and years to do it. And it's a combination of the planning and then the development of the project and the implement and the implementation of the project, um, and then the, the funding of the project. And so there's there's all these different aspects of it that have to all fall into place to make it all work and, and happen. But you know, the, the other thing that's been going on is not so much the projects. They're, obviously, they're going on out there in, in the flood mitigations efforts, but there's also the, the property acquisition and, and the home buyout. And that's just removing people uh, from these floodplains um, that, are, that are going to keep flooding. And, you know, that's kind of an a end-all solution, if you will, for a lot of places uh, in certain areas of the county where uh, the projects are not going to be beneficial for, for residents. And so we've been purchasing homes and moving those uh, folks out of the way. And, and one thing I'd, I'd like to point out is, um, you know, just because, you know, we had the potential to be impacted by by Laura, um, it doesn't mean we were going to have a Harvey. And I think that's a really important point to make is that just because we could potentially be impacted by a tropical storm or a hurricane doesn't mean it's going to be this massive flood. Every storm is different. The impact of each storm is different. And if you look over at what happened in Lake Charles, uh, this was a wind event. Uh, they had very little rainfall flooding because the storm was moving so quickly. And so um, every time we get threatened by a hurricane does not mean it's going to be a Harvey. And we're going to talk more about that and the storm surge that didn't happen as it was forecast to do. We'll do that on Newsmakers Extra. Click to Houston.com. Go to the Newsmakers page. We'll do that. Frank, Jeff, stand by to continue that conversation. Thank you. Very important. Help us save lives along the way, I'm sure.